Hey, so welcome to video five, and this is a request video, so thank you for that. Uh, somebody wanted to know about uh, how edge weighting worked in Modo, and so I thought I would just run through it real quick, um, just to show you the advantages it has uh, over edge loop controls. You'll see how much uh, more fluid this is, and how freeing it is, and how fast it is. So. Uh, Moto has two different ways of subdividing meshes. There's the standard subdivisions, which is like your Turbo Smooth modifier and Max. And then it, uh, it has an alternate way of doing the subdivision, which is P subs, which are Pixar subdivisions, which I think is the same as Open Subdiv. I, I'm not completely up on the terminology, I just know how it works. So we'll take a look at Moto. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview of edge weighting, uh, and then I'll show you some comparisons. Let's go. Okay, so now we're in Moto, and you may recognize this mesh from the uh, last video. Uh, this is our ridged handle with, uh, with an extruded bit on top, so I could demonstrate that a little bit. The thing with edge weighting is that it deals with some percentages and numbers that don't make a lot of sense to me, but you know, once you learn to work with them, it, it kind of feels okay. Uh, for example, when I'm in uh, Kentmore Clark subdivision level three, it's a 20% edge weight is almost about as hard as you want to go. That almost gives you a crisp corner. 25% uh, is completely locked out. It's weird. Um, just accept the numbers and roll with it and you'll be fine. So with that out of the way, uh, Moto has some really nice tools for applying edge weights, but just for demonstration purposes, let me subdivide this mesh. So, so this has no controls on it at all. Uh, you can see there's a few edge loops in here which are helping to hold this shape around here, but these ridges have nothing. So traditionally, you, know, you would select these ridges and throw some extra edge loops in. Uh, I'm gonna be throwing some hotkeys at this stuff uh, just to speed it along, but uh, you know, the hotkeys are not necessary and it's not really important how they work. Uh, we'll get into that maybe in a future video. But you can see, it, 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 your traditional method is you throw in some edge loops and, and things get crispy, right? So let me uh, back out of that. Now with edge weighting, what I would do mm -hmm. is I would select, say, all of these loops. And this is a handy little pop-up menu that I've made for edge weighting. I hope you can read that. Uh, you may have to zoom in a little bit or something. But um, uh, this resets my mesh. Uh, these apply the various percentages of weighting, uh, and this turns on uh, the interactive weight tool. And we'll get to that in a minute. But for now, uh, I know that I'm at a subdivision level three right now. So 20% is about as hard as I want to go. So if I pick 20%, you can see how all that kind of hardened up nicely. And, and if I select all of these, actually, I, uh, I can select the edges now. Uh, Moto has a nice thing where uh, if you apply uh, weights to an edge, then it applies to the edge. If you apply weights to a face, um, then it applies the weight to all of the bordering edges, uh, which is what you saw me do a minute ago. So with the edges selected, I'll throw 20% on there, and we get the exact same look. Except now, uh, I can begin to play with this much easier than I can with edge loops. I can say, well, how about this top loop? We don't have any weighting on it. Okay, that gives me a smooth curve down from the top. And I'm like, well, okay, what if we also grab this loop and pull it down a little bit? Maybe we expand it out slightly. This as well. Give that a push. Maybe grab this face, pull it out, or rather, out. And then grab these faces, give them a 20%. I'll go all the way around and give it all a 20% weighting. Okay. Pull this out a little bit. Grab the bottom, pull that down. If you can see that when I'm pulling stuff around, I'm just pulling them. It's like I'm pulling the cage around. You know, I'm not pulling around the uh, the edge and all the supporting edges and then things are getting skewy and then you know all that kind of jazz. This is just straight up nice and fluid and it's not getting in my way of my shaping my mesh in the way that I want to shape it. 
fill in a loop around there to uh, add some roundness to this, pull it out a little bit. But then I decide that I want to get this lower edge also crisped up. I can throw a weight on that. Okay. And now I have that look going. Uh, and that's the kind of fluidity that I mean. Now, the thing to remember with this is that this, uh, this won't export directly. So if you're baking outside of Moto, like I do, uh, you have to freeze the geometry first and then export the frozen mesh, uh, which is not a big deal. You just bind that up to some hotkeys, uh, but it is an extra step. Uh, if you bake inside of Moto, this will just automatically work. So you're set. And one last thing I wanted to show uh, that it's not quite the panacea that it seems sometimes because it does need a certain density of geometry to chew on before it really works. So up here at the top, you can see we've got a long, so some long polygons here with a, a triangle fan on top. Yeah. Uh, if I subdivide, huh, let me reset the mesh. If I subdivide this, you can see that it all falls down like you would expect it to. Now with edge weighting, you know you would grab that and you would throw a control edge in and, and subdivide and be on your way, right? you know, which is fine. Uh, the equivalent uh, with edge weighting would be to subdivide it and select this top face and then give it a weight. But it doesn't look quite as good as the edge, as the edge loop control version because of these long polygons. Hold on, there we go. Uh, of these long polygons. So you sometimes have to insert edge loops to help it along and, you know, and give it something to chew on. So you'll see if I throw an edge loop in, say, here, and then subdivide, now it's now it's cleaner. All right, so I'll go in here and pull this out. You can see it gets a little janky. But if I throw a control edge in right there, uh, that still gives me the freedom uh, of the weighting up here because I can still play with this in real time dynamically. But uh, with enough geometry to chew on, you know, it can maintain that edge. So that can be a bit of a hassle sometimes, but it's not a big deal. And I think the pros uh, really outweigh the cons on that. So the last thing that I wanted to show is really just the interactive weight tool. And uh, this is something that I don't usually use very much, but you know, it's fun for demonstration purposes. So let me grab these loops right here. And I'm gonna turn off the selection highlight because uh, it gets in the way for this kind of thing. But if I go into my little pop-up menu and I choose the weight tool, from here I can click and drag uh, in the viewport and interactively change how tight those edges are or how crispy that's gonna be. So I can say right about there, and you can see on the slider at the top, it's locked at 23.5% or perhaps you can't read it, I don't know. Hide that video. But the reason that I don't use this very often is because uh, I don't like the imprecision. You know, I like to know exactly, or, or rather, uh, I like to know uh, what values things are like I want it to be consistent so my pop-up menu gives me that so if I just go select 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 you're 20 percent and all of you guys you're 15 you know so it's faster uh, for me but just know you have the interactive drag tool if you want it and that's the basics of edge weighting now if you guys have extra or other stuff you want to see in future videos, let me know. Thanks.